Hello everyone, this is Peep. I've decided to do another tutorial and this time it's going to be a video tutorial. This is the first time that I'm using um, a video capture program so yes it's going to be a little rough around the edges but I hope I end up with a final product for you. I've chosen to do another tutorial right now because of a couple of things I wanted to let you know about PicMonkey. First of all, if you've seen my other tutorials, you know that I am a Royale user. That gives you access to a lot of different um, effects that aren't available in just the basic edition. And right now, you can get a free trial of Royale. So all you need to do is go to pickmonkey.com, the home page, click on get it. Um, you can try it out for a week. If you don't like it, you can cancel it. But if you love it, you can sign up. The other thing is they've added an, an additional item called um, design and what that is is it allows you to create your own graphics. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can use that today and to access it all you do is you hover your mouse over design on the home page and you can choose your canvas size. The first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how I made a basic calendar and for that I'm going to choose the 8 by 10 canvas size. So you just click on that and it brings up a white blank page. You can find the canvas color under the basic edits which is accessed by clicking on the little crop mark in the far left of your screen. Now you can leave it white, um, you can make it transparent or you can make it any color you'd like. Because my calendar is um, going to have a bit of a border and um, I'm using photographs with a white background. I'm actually going to color the background a bit just so it's easier to see those edges of my photographs when I line them up. Pick any color you like. I'm just going to go with this kind of a gray. Click on apply and you're ready to go. So I need to import some photographs into this. To do this I'm going to go over here to the far left and click on the little butterfly which brings up the overlays menu. There are a lot of different things preloaded into PicMonkey but I'm going to use my own. So I just click up here. That is going to open up my directory and I'm going to import a calendar which I have downloaded from publicdomainpictures.net. Um, this site has access to a lot of public domain pictures. Some are royalty free, um, some are completely uh, free, some you have to pay for. This particular one is free. It is a public domain license so all I need to do is include a hyperlink to the particular page and I'll do that in my blog post and it's good to go. So now that it's imported into PicMonkey. It's a tiny little thing so I just want to resize that. So I just grab the little circles on the corners, pull it up and then I will just place it toward the bottom part of my calendar. You can make adjustments to this as long as you do not compress the layers and please do not do this at this point. You can when you complete your calendar but if you do it now then it will merge into the background and if you want to make any changes to your background it will completely cover over it. So we'll leave that as it is for right now and now I'm going to import a photograph to go at the top. So I just go back to my own again and I'll pull in this photograph. Now this is just a raw shot. Um, I haven't used this one before so I've just cropped it to 1024 by 638. Now that's what works for this particular image that I'm using but you can play around with that so that you get the right size crop for whatever project you're working on. I'm just going to stretch that one out and then align it with my calendar. I'll click over here and I can see that's pretty close, maybe just a tiny bit too big. I'll try and drag that in just a little bit. Uh, that's too big. Bring it back and click off. I've got a little gap there. I'll just drag it down 
and reposition. Still just a little bit too big. That's pretty close. That'll work for now. <clears throat> so now that I have my images in place, um, I've got a little bit more space at the top than I do at the bottom. You can leave it like that or you can move your photographs around so that you've evened that up. So if I take that one straight up just a little bit and this one as well, realign it. And that's a tricky part. I do, do wish there was a, um, a ruler to use, but since there's not, we'll just go with that. Now I want to change the color of my background. So I click back on my basic edits, go to my canvas color. It reverts to white, and now I can make that background any color I'd like. I'd like to pick up a light pink. Um, to kind of go with the pink in my top. That's not too bad. I'll lighten it up a little bit just by adjusting over here on your color picker. I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to click Apply. If you want to at this point, you can add a frame, um, a simple edge maybe. Um, if you don't like the black as your outer color, just click on the color square and it brings up a color picker. Now if you want a custom color click on the eyedropper and then drag it over to your photograph and you can actually select a color that's um, within your photograph just to kind of keep it all consistent. So there's a little bit of gray. That'll work. We'll go with that. Click apply. A calendar is done. All you need to do now is save it, and we will call this Peeps 2014 Calendar. Now you can adjust your image quality over here. You can um, stick with good. I generally bump it up because I've got quite a bit of storage space and I just like higher quality images. You can change your so dimensions if you want. Now this is locked so that it will keep the same ratio. So if you want to make it a bit smaller, say 1024, then it will automatically adjust the dimensions so that it stays in ratio. I'm just going to save that one. Oh, I've already named it that something that, so I will give it a 1 at the end. I've saved that. Oh yeah. We'll add the dot JPEG. That's it. And there it is. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to close this out and I'm going to show you how to make a watermark. Again, we go back to design. You can choose whatever size you like. I'm just going to select the square this time. And what you want to do now is you want to go over into your canvas color and click on transparent. So that's going to give you a transparent background for um, your logo or whatever you want to use as your watermark. Click apply and now I go to text. That's the double T's over here on the far left and choose a font. All of these with the little crowns next to them, those are Royale. Um, fonts and you can find that in just about every section where you've got access to these only if uh, you're a Royale user. <coughs> um, I like this one so it's telling me that I have to upgrade to use it. Um, I'm not going to bother doing that since I already am one and I'm, I just haven't logged in for this session. So I'll pick a different font, say for instance this one, Playball add text and I'm just going to type in picks by peep. Um, I'll center that over here on the right. I just click the center and then I don't want black. I want a pretty pink color say for instance. If you click out of it and then back into it then you can access your colors and then you can adjust from there. 
Now you'll be able to make adjustments to the blend mode and um, the fade after it's done, but you really want to select whatever basic color you want now. So that's a bit dark, but because I want to be able to play with it on other photos, I'll leave it there. Now I have a second line um, that is part of my watermark, um, but I want it to be a, a smaller size. So I could just click in and type it, but um, number one, it's a bit big, so I'll just highlight it and I can adjust my font size over here with my drop down. Um, but I don't really like it stacked one on top of the other like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that last line and I'm just going to add another text box. Now here, um, I'll go ahead and adjust my size. I can do it afterwards if I want. And portraits with a difference. Um, now I can just move that to wherever I want it to go. Let's align it about right there. That's good. Now if I want to keep the same color that I have in my first line, I just go over to my color picker and I click my cursor into the color box at the far right. That brings up my color picker and then I can just hover over the letter and I have an exact match. So there we have it, my basic watermark. I'm going to save this and my watermark. This will save as a PNG. Now that's important so you keep the transparent background. My dimensions are 2000 by 2000. You can change that. I'll just leave it as it is. I'll save that. There it is. All done. Now if I go back and I open my original photograph Um, there it is. I can go now to overlays again, my own, and bring in my watermark. Comes up very small. You can adjust the size, move it around to wherever you want. I'll make it a little bit bigger. That's good. Then you can adjust the fade on it, make it a bit lighter if you like. That looks good. Done. And save. And there you have it. Um, I hope you enjoy using PicMonkey as much as I do, and I hope this has been helpful. Cheers, and I'll see you around the blog.